All right, guys, so this video's topic is talking about dampening the recoil that you feel in your AK, how to get rid of it, how to minimize it, etc. There's three pieces that I recommend for this. A recoil spring being one, a hammer spring, and a good muzzle device. So here I have a JMAC RRD 4C 24 millimeter on here. On the internals, I'm running the ALG recoil spring. And you can see in here, also, I am running the, right in here by the hammer, I'm running the high energy hammer spring by ALG Defense as well. So in the first clip, in the first video that you're gonna see, you're gonna see how the hammer spring and the recoil spring help dampen the felt recoil in your AK. In the next videos after that, we'll show how a muzzle device works and works on reducing or dampening the felt recoil in your AK. All right, so let's take a closer look in how the hammer spring recoil spring work on the AK. So you can see the hammer going in, striking the firing pin. Now the hammer, with the hammer spring is now in the way of the bolt carrier group going backwards along with the recoil spring. So the bolt carrier group has to overcome the hammer and hammer spring and recoil spring all at the same time to make its rearward travel. Okay, so once it gets there, then it's going to come forward. Again, this is why I strongly believe that the recoil spring, replacing your recoil spring and hammer spring will help dampen the felt recoil that you feel out of your AK. As y'all guys can see in the video, I talk about how the hammer spring gets engaged first and the recoil spring all at the same time. Okay, so let's take a tabletop view to this. So if you look right here, you have your hammer right here. And you have right here, this is, I'm going to call it a tang. So that's your tang to the rearmost part of your bolt carrier group. This is your bolt carrier group. This is your recoil spring right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take out the recoil spring and show how the hammer plays a role and how the hammer spring plays a role in reducing the recoil. So right off the bat, you can see where the tang engages the hammer. At the same time, you have your recoil spring up here already causing tension, for forward pressure towards the chamber of the gun. So right here, the bolt carrier group not only has to overcome the recoil spring, but also the, the hammer with the hammer spring. What tensions the hammer? Uh, the hammer spring. Durr. So why don't you replace a hammer spring and put a higher energy or a stronger a spring in there to help make this heavier or harder to overcome for the energy. So in doing so, you're going to reduce that felt recoil on top of the recoil spring that's applying forward pressure right in here. So here we go. And you can see the spring and the hammer almost at the same time. First, you're gonna have the recoil spring, as you can see in the movement being engaged. Then you have the bolt carrier group hitting the hammer, then overcoming the hammer and hammer spring. Okay, so that's how that works. All right, now I'm moving on to a muzzle brake. So how does a muzzle brake work? Well, a muzzle brake simply works by violently redirecting gas off the linear path of the bullet. If you pay attention to this slow motion video, you'll see the gas escaping. And there you go. Off to the sides. And some of the gas is trailing behind the bullet. But if you notice that the gas is also kind of coming at a backward swept angle, kind of pulling your gun forward. That's also to pull the gun slightly forward so you don't feel it. So let's take a look at a side view in how a muzzle brake works. You can see that there's a lot of gas being directed off to the side by the muzzle brake. 
So if you're shooting next to a buddy and things like that, it's not going to be very pleasant for him. Or if you turn the gun down to the side and if you're laying on your side in the prone, you're going to kick up a lot of dirt. Just keep that in mind whenever you're using a brake, but a brake does help reduce a lot of the recoil. As you can see, there's very, very minimal movement. If you pay attention at the muzzle, very, very little movement whatsoever of the gun. As I said in the video, a muzzle brake works by violently redirecting gas to off the linear path of the bullet. So if you take a look how JMAC did it, they have four chambers right in here. So once the bullet passes and the following gas comes in, it's going to hit this first wall, second wall, third wall, fourth wall. Getting violently redirected, and you can see in the video too, the gas is almost going at a 45 almost at this kind of angle, so pulling your gun forward away from you. That movement that you see in the gun is actually the bolt carrier group slamming backwards and then slamming forward. That you can't really help out. But the initial blast you can by violently redirecting gas off the linear path. This is nothing new, it's always been there, but always invest in effective muzzle brakes and the JMAC is one of them. And that's it guys, thanks for tuning in and watching this video, I hope you found this video very informative. Click that like button, subscribe, also click the notification bell so you know whenever I post a new video. Also follow me on Instagram, thatguy underscore possum. Also down below in the description I do have some affiliate links for the parts that I mentioned in this video. Click on those links and if you buy something it does help the channel out and also helps my Instagram grow. Again, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. See you next time.